Yes, thanks very much, Duncan. And we'll start with Saturday night at the Sheffield Arena. It saw Kel Brook's first successful defence of his IBF World Welterweight title and a European crown too for the so far lesser known of Hatfield's fighting twins, Gavin McDonnell. What a night it was. Special one. Recovery complete, doubts dispelled. He nearly lost his life when he was stabbed shortly after winning the world crown. He hadn't lost his edge. Feels awesome. First of all, uh, walking down towards towards the ring, you know, I felt you know, goosebumps and air fan on the back of my neck. I was so overwhelmed with with all the fans, you know, stood up, you know, watching me come out. It was it was truly amazing. This is what this is what I'm in the sport for. He wasn't at his best. His timing and accuracy slightly off. Maybe in a desperate effort to impress, but he was still too aggressive, too powerful for an opponent who'd never previously been stopped. After four knockdowns in four rounds, the Canadian-based Romanian challenger Jojo Dan was retired by his corner on his stool. It was just a matter of time. I, when I started hurting him, you know, as soon as I touched him, and I just knew that you know, it was a matter of time before I got rid of him. But I, just, I was just in there to have fun, you know, and uh, it's always nice to get the first one out of the way as in you know, my homecoming. You won't believe six months ago he's at death's door, you know, uh, horrific injuries to his leg. You know, I think a lot of people maybe thought, you know, they've, maybe they kept it under wraps, there is something wrong with his leg, you know, it's going to be a suck it and see type of fight. But as you can see, you know, there's nothing affected Kel Brook. He's been in the best shape of his life and he dealt with a, a very, very tough com customer very, very easily. The big unanswered question is who next? In the ring, he and his promoter, Eddie Hearn, called out fellow Brit Amir Khan. If Amir Khan's watching, give everyone what they want. I just want to excite the fans, you know, but, you know, that fight's there. I'm, I'm willing to fight. Why not? Why not? You know, it'd be a British thriller. What is certain is that Saturday's performance, seen live in America, has propelled Brooke into the top echelon. And that's now the next step for Gavin McDonnell, who won the vacant European Super Bantamweight title almost five years to the day after his twin brother Jamie's first European crown first inspired him to give boxing a go. McDonnell comfortably outpointed the durable Ukrainian Alexander Yegorov. When people say, oh, put, put, your, put your mind to something, do you know what I mean? If you believe you can do it, you can do it. I'm living proof, do you know what I mean? Can he do it? What you've done, can he win a world title? Most definitely. Listen, I never thought I'd be a world champion. I didn't know anything like said in the interview. I didn't even know what a British title was. If I can go and do it, he's only the same as me. He can go and do it. Just one disappointment at the arena. Sheffield's highly rated middleweight Adam Etch is knocked out by a sickening punch from the Belarusian Sergei Kamitsky. But it couldn't take the shine off Kel Brook's night. Physically and mentally, the special one is back. Yes, Kel Brook, Lizzie Armitstead and Johnny Brownlee all produced fantastic performances on the world stage at the weekend. We start with Kel, who in front of a packed Motorpoint Arena in Sheffield successfully defended his IBF world boxing title. We'll talk to Kel live in a moment, but first, here's Shamir Masri with the story of another impressive night's work for the undefeated welterweight. Kel Brook displayed total dominance on Saturday night. A 10,000-strong crowd saw the IBF champion knock his opponent to the floor four times in four rounds. The challenger, Jojo Dan, and his corner both agreed enough was enough and decided not to come out for a fifth round. Fantastic tonight to do that in front of me, on, on fans. I took care of Jojo Dan, a very tough customer. I kept getting off the floor, my hat goes off to him, never been stopped. I'm very happy with the win. His trainer at the Ingle Gym knew Kel Brook has all the ability and punch power needed to retain his welterweight world title. Fortunately for Kel Brook, he's got power in his jab and his right hand, his right uppercut, his left hook and his right hook. You know, every shot he hits you with, warming him up on the pads before he went out. You know, I looked over to Greg, the nutritionist, said he's punching hard, he's fueled up, he's got the carbs in, he's done the weight right. You can feel the power in the shots. And I knew from that point on that Joe Jordan was going to be in for a hard night. All the talk since Saturday is centred around a domestic super fight between Kel and Bolton's Amir Khan. Kel's promoter publicly offered Khan a June date at Wembley Stadium, but Amir Khan has since said the fight will happen when it's meant to happen. Everyone wants a Khan fight. That in the ring there was just to try and put a little bit of pressure on. I don't think that fight's going to happen next, so you know we have to go out there and, and find a big name for Kel. I love the Marquez fight, I love the Rios fight. The Thurman fight's a great fight, but they want that in America, and we're going to build here 
in the UK. So Kel may have to wait to fight Khan if he can't be tempted just yet, but he will be back in the ring defending his IBF belt in the summer. Where that might be and against whom is yet to be decided. Well, Shamir was ringside on Saturday night and in the dressing room too, and he's with Kel now at his parents' home. Shamir. Thanks, Tanya. Yes, I'm here in Sheffield at the uh, home of Kel's uh, mum and dad. And uh, joining us, of course, is Kel Brook. Now, we've got a bit of an... They want to fight Kel Brook, but not just yet, towards the end of this year, start of next. So, hopefully, Kel, that could still happen. As long as it happens for the fans, uh, I'm happy. I'm happy. I just, I just, even though I don't really deserve it, you know, I'm champion. You know, I'm leading the way. It's just a fight I want for the fans, and it's a very exciting fight. It's a fight what I, I want because wherever I go, everyone's saying, when are you fighting? And for years, so I just want to put it to bed and, you know, uh, rackle his whiskers. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I've heard plenty of that. I mean, uh, I mean, Eddie Hearn's come out today and said you could, you could, obviously nothing's in, in cement yet, but you could even be fighting as early as the, the end of May in the O2 in London. Yeah, as soon as I got back to the dressing room, I said to him, you know, I haven't really done much tonight. I said, I want to get out again as soon as possible. I want to be in people's face. I want to, you know, I've, the buzz was that great that night. I just said, I need to be involved with something like that again. Get me out. We're looking at getting out. And then uh, a massive fight, July 25th-ish, them kind of back end of July. Um, you know, it's I'm very excited, you know, to be back boxing again, fit and healthy, you know, other night, I felt so good in there. I've got a nutritionist, Greg Marriott, was doing me nutrition. And, uh, to, you know, for the layoff I've had on the leg, you know, and Ara felt that night, you know, he did an unbelievable job with me. So I want to thank Greg Marriott yeah. for uh, being on board. I mean, we were filming him right in this very house in the kitchen, but what a night that was for you to come out. 10,000 fans, that must have been an amazing feeling and, and to put on such a performance as well. Amazing, amazing, absolutely. Uh, to get a second chance and, you know, to be lifted up there, you know, in front of a packed out house in, in, in my back, backyard. The goosebumps, the, the emotion what come over me that night, you know, the night were truly amazing. To be walking out there, getting closer to the ring, knowing that, you know, I'd put myself through it in training and I knew this is where I belonged. And... Uh, you know, getting in there and doing the business. You certainly did the business indeed. And uh, joining us also is, is your dad, Terry. I mean, Terry, you recognise Kel's talent from a very young age, so a long time ago. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say uh, Kel was sort of, uh, as a young child, he were, you know, a lad who were heavily into, you know, karate, jumping all over, hyperactive, love strings, love climbing, love just, uh, you know, a natural, a natural athlete, you know, someone were. were Obvious, and you know how you do when you play, and you play fighting, and suddenly realise, you know, that Kel, he was quite an handful. He was very strong, natural, natural, natural lad, you know, and that's what he loved to do. So, it was early as seven year old when he first went down to Brendan Ingalls' gym, you know, and uh, I remember he took it, he loved it, you know, and it went on and on, on and on and on, and it went back. He left for a short while, and then went back with his nine, and since then he won absolutely. He's, he's done a fantastic job and it's been an absolute pleasure to follow your career and I think uh, maybe uh, myself I could have a, a bit of a career in the ring. I might be a bit old and a bit past it, but do you think I'd look good in the ring? I think you get a bit carried, <laughs> get a bit carried away there, you know? Get a bit carried away there with your shorts on. I'm not entirely sure what I'm supposed to say there, but I'm not sure it was tea time viewing the...